You're pressing charges against him, correct? Correct. I want to press charges against both of the officers that threw me down the steps. I have an, and I have a witness that I just, he gave me his number. He was walking outside of the city hall. He said that I will be a witness. I saw what they did to you. They threw you down the steps. I have it on video. You have it on video? That is correct. I was filming, I was peacefully filming in city hall. I'm a journalist. I was gathering content for a story. They came up to me, said, you can't record in a public building. Uh, we have freedom of press in this country. They grabbed me, threw me in the pushed me in the elevator, pushing me out the door. I said, what's your name? He tells me a name that's not his name. He lies to me. Then I, he took me and then he threw me down the steps right here in front of a witness. Again, completely unconstitutional violation of my rights. And it's all on video, ma'am. Sangamon County is gearing up for some change with a brand new sheriff who's all about putting the community first. Paula Crouch is stepping in as the first female sheriff after former Sheriff Jack Campbell retired last month amid fallout from the tragic police shooting of Sonia Massey. Campbell faced serious criticism over how he handled the situation, especially after Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker called for his resignation. Crouch is ready to shake things up. I want to focus on protecting citizens and partnering with local communities, she said, adding that she's keen to team up with organizations to enhance the services provided by the sheriff's office. She's jumping into her new role just 18 days after Campbell's retirement, which came on the heels of backlash surrounding the hiring of Deputy Sean Grayson, the officer involved in Massey's demise. Crouch admitted she hasn't had a chance to dig into the office's policies yet, but she's ready to roll up her sleeves and figure out what needs fixing. There's always room for improvement and we can definitely do better, she noted. She's eager to get to know the community's needs and how to address them effectively. Plus, Crouch hopes her role will inspire other women and minorities to pursue leadership positions. I believe my background in law enforcement shows I'm a solid choice for sheriff and that I can lead the department where it needs to go, she said. The situation around Massey's tragic case is heavy. She called 911 on July 6th about a potential prowler at her home. When deputies arrived, a dispute involving a pot of hot water ended with Grayson shooting her. He's since been fired and indicted on first-degree charges, pleading not guilty and being denied pretrial release. With Crouch at the helm, it looks like Sangamon County is poised for a fresh start. She said she was going to rebuke me in the name of Jesus and came out with boiling water. That's what all this is. I was standing right here. All right. Thank you. Me. <laughs> oh, uh, I didn't yeah. know what happened. <laughs> yeah, I'm good. Fucking just crazy. Uh, he's got tape. I, I think I got a roll. On things that we've seen here recently, again, that um, we can probably improve. Campbell announced his retirement following backlash over the death of Sonia Massey. Now, Sheriff Campbell faced questions on how Grayson was hired after he was charged with T2 DUIs. Former Sangamon County Deputy Sean Grayson shot Sonia in her home. She had called about a prowler. She said one of her main priorities is putting the needs of the community first. What do you plan to do differently from your predecessor? But just to get a better understanding of what the community needs are and how we can address those needs or want to work towards offering the protection of the citizens, working in partnership with the different um, communities. Obviously there's room for improvement and we can always make things better. My resume will um, encourage people to believe that I'm a good choice for sheriff and that I have the background. Starting next week, Paula Crouch is set to meet with the directors of each division to see what changes need to be made in their department. It's a joke. At a recent Sangamon County Board meeting, things got heated over the newly established Massey Commission aimed at tackling police practices following the tragedy of Sonia Massey. One local woman, Teresa Haley, didn't hold back her feelings about the commission, calling it a joke. She slammed it as fake and accused the board of rushing it together just to check the box and claim they're doing something. The commission was put together last month by board chairman Andy Van Meter and state senator Doris Turner to look into issues like systemic problems in law enforcement, mental health responses, and community relations. This comes after 36-year-old Sonia Massey called 911 on July 6th, thinking someone was outside her home, only to be shot by former deputy Sean P. Grayson in a chaotic incident over a pot of boiling water. Grayson's record is under scrutiny. He's jumped between agencies and has two DUIs on his record, plus a dubious military discharge. The commission, co-chaired by Jerry Cruz from the SIU School of Medicine, Reverend T. Ray McJunkins from Union Baptist Church, and Nina Harris from the Illinois Commission on Equity and Inclusion, kicked off its first listening session on Monday. While they haven't named all 12 commissioners yet, 
McJunkins confirmed that nine members, including someone from the Massey family, are on board. But not everyone is optimistic. Jenna Broom expressed concerns about the lack of subpoena power, saying, this commission really is nothing. I hope there's a way to get all the records and documents we need. Brianna Roberts chimed in, stressing the need for transparency in appointments and warning against bringing in people with questionable backgrounds. Sangamon County deserves better, she declared. Haley, who runs her own PR firm and stands with the Massey family, criticized the decision to name co-chairs without letting the commissioners weigh in. That's bold transparency, she pointed out. That's what gets people to buy into it. With so many strong opinions in the room, it's clear the community is eager for real change. A little ticked over asking her for her license. And she didn't have to give him her license. She was in her home. He's standing pretty close. Situational awareness. She said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And that man lost his shit. I will say it with until I turn blue in the face. And literally her in cold blood. He says, huh? She says, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. This sets him off. He goes off at being rebuked. I believe this wholehearted, better effing not, or I swear to God, I will shoot you in the effing face. They were irritated going up to her door. This was an innocent woman. Okay? I could hear it in their voice asking her for her ID. He saw her put the pot down. He keeps saying, drop the pot, drop the pot, drop the pot. This guy should have never been in law enforcement and he deserves to be in prison for the rest of his life. Yeah, she's still breathing, but she's losing a lot of blood. No remorse, nothing. A fresh storm. But Springfield's woes don't end there as there's a fresh storm brewing and it's got everyone buzzing about former police sergeant Michael A. Egan, who just got hit with aggravated DUI charges after a nasty accident. Egan, who recently left his post, was involved in a collision on East Lake Shore Drive, where his SUV slammed into a motorcycle, leaving two people in critical condition. Now, he's facing felony charges, and all eyes are on him. He was arrested by Illinois State Police and U.S. Marshals and is set to appear in court soon. What's even more intriguing? A Springfield police lieutenant allegedly tipped off State Police about Egan's DUI investigation, which led to evidence collection, including a blood sample from Egan. That's now sitting with the Sangamon County State's Attorney's Office. Meanwhile, a protest kicked off at the Springfield Police Department's headquarters, drawing over 100 people. Organized by activist Tiara Standage, who's been vocal since Sonia Massey's tragedy, the demonstration turned tense, with Standage herself being cited for aggravated battery due to claims of police misconduct. Could the timing of all this be more than just coincidence? Egan's arrest is raising eyebrows, especially given the ongoing scrutiny of the police department. Folks are left wondering if there's a connection between this latest mess and the earlier tragedy involving Deputy Grayson. As Chief of Police, it's been my goal to be upfront and honest with the 113,000 citizens of the city of Springfield. Behind words on a piece of paper, I want you to hear from me directly as to what exactly transpired. A community that has been rocked by the death of Sonia Massey, calling for accountability and justice for her, and now they want that for Farley and for Hopkins. Donna Massey, the mother of Sonia Massey, who was shot and killed by a Sangamon County deputy, also attended the protest. Former officer hit two motorcyclists last week. He has now been arrested for DUI. Two people on the motorcycle were thrown and taken to the hospital and were seriously hurt. State police say Michael Egan hit two people on a motorcycle. On Thursday, police say Egan hit Chelsea Farley and Trevor Hopkins. State police say Egan was taken into custody this afternoon and he's currently behind bars at the Sangamon County Jail. State police say they did a blood draw on Egan and they later gave the results to the Sangamon County State's Attorney's Office. Today, protesters were outside the police station for a little over three hours calling for justice and accountability for Farley and Hopkins, which resulted in him being arrested for a DUI causing great bodily harm. The police pushed them out, then they went back in. They were pushed out again and I saw a protester throw water at police and while I was also out here today, protesters said someone was detained by police following the incident. The problem keeps piling. To make things even worse, Grayson has tattoos linked to white supremacist groups. This raises some serious questions about whether he saw Massey as an easy target because of her race. 
his troubling connections to extremist ideologies, along with his checkered past of misconduct, makes this whole situation even more disturbing. This case isn't just about what happened to Sonia Massey, it highlights a bigger problem. Black people, especially black women, often face serious risks even when they're just trying to get help. It's a glaring sign that we need real substantial reform. Politicians love to make grand statements about police reform and racial justice during election seasons, but when the cameras are off, action often falls short. The fight for justice for Sonia Massey is more than just about her case. It's about confronting the deep-seated racism that puts lives at risk. We need more than just talk. We need serious, comprehensive police reform and leadership that takes these issues seriously. An anti-black hate crime bill could be a start. If officers knew there would be tougher consequences, maybe they'd think twice before acting out. Grayson faces first-degree charges, but that won't bring Sonia Massey back. If the government had been more proactive in addressing racist policing and white supremacy, maybe she'd still be here today. An alarming situation. The situation for black women in America when it comes to crime is downright alarming. Recent data shows that black women, especially those aged 25 to 44, are six times more likely to be slayed compared to their white peers. This isn't just some dry statistic. It highlights the harsh realities many black women face every day in the U.S. So what's driving this disturbing trend? It's a messy mix of structural racism, economic challenges, and a lack of access to vital resources like housing and jobs. Add to that the easy access to guns, and you've got a recipe for increased violence. To tackle this issue, we need to make talking about DV a normal part of our conversations and confront the roots caused behind these disparities. With more people pushing for stronger gun laws and working to break down systemic inequalities, it's clear that we have a lot of work to do to protect black women and make sure they're no longer carrying the weight of America's failures. That's all for this video, folks. We'll see you next time.